Hi, I'm Talia. Hi, I'm Matthew. And, and we, we are, are The, the Critics. Critics. And this is how The Critics would fix Batman and Robin in 10 fixes. Fix number one, butts and nipples. For reasons only known to Joel Schumacher, we decide to have the most the opening scene of this movie be a shot of Batman and Robin's butts and nipples, and later on we add in Bad Woman into the mix and get some more butts and nipple shots. Uh, we, uh, no. <laughs> Just no. In order to fix this, what we should do is make it a serious film. Batman suiting up is an important part of the process for Batman fans. Don't make fun of it. Don't make it camp. Don't make it creepy. More. <laughs> More to yeah. the point, and just show us, show, show him suiting up normally, like a normal person. Fix number two, don't make Batman crazy. In this film, Batman is as weird as the villains. The yeah. suit is weird, his Batcave is weird, the whole context of him is just strange. Uh, not particularly George Clooney's acting or non-acting. Yeah. Just the concept of Batman in the, this film in particular was strange. So, Matt, how would you... So it? you've got to make Batman serious. The reason that the Joker is the most uh, fun character in Dark Knight is because he's got a really serious Batman to work off. If everyone is crazy, then no one stands out. Batman has to always be the serious character. He's the fall to the villains. Their craziness to their seriousness. Um, Batman has to be serious as a character. At the very least, he can't be as crazy or weird or camp, or, or camp yeah. as his villains. Uh, there needs to be that distinction. He needs to even, he can even, yeah, he's even allowed to have that juxtaposition against the rest of Gotham. But Batman's got to be our one rock of sanity, non-camp, normalness. Fix number three, the cast. From not particularly good acting all the way through to people that didn't really seem to understand who they were trying to act as, uh, the cast in Batman and Robin wasn't something that you would notice a highlight. The way we'd fix this is, perhaps keep Val Kilmer from the first film, well, from Batman Forever. Uh, that, that, I think, would have solved a lot of problems. George Clooney is basically Bruce Wayne. Yeah. He didn't add anything to Batman. Most of his scenes were just him looking down and smiling, sadly. <laughs> uh, Robin was good, but the rest of them, poor, very poor. From Arnold to Uma Thurman, yeah. who's usually great. That everything was bad. I don't think they had a lot to work with, but it still wasn't delivered adequately. So you should have kept Val Kilmer and recast or, or changed characters or something. Fix number four, set design. I don't know about you, Matt, but I felt like I was in a child's playroom for most of this film. Although we were kids when this came out, yeah. uh, it just looks terrible. It's terrible, absolutely terrible. It looks like a really bad Tim Burton film where it all just looks so fake There's, you're suspending your belief to the nth degree um, it, it was just terrible it looked very toy-like, child-like yeah, how would you solve this? so the set, the world in which you want us to exist and believe that this movie exists in has to match the themes that you're trying to do and in a Batman movie that's got to be something that's particularly serious um, especially when you're dealing with uh, crazy people and trying to deal with them. The set needs to reflect the seriousness that you're trying to convey in this movie. And freezing over a whole lot of people is something serious. Uh, you know, and it's not just a case of the sign of the times. Uh, the mask was incredibly good. Uh, Star Wars had already come out and mm. had amazing sets. There's no excuse, especially for something as big budget as Batman, to have cheap, what ultimately looked like cheap, uh, no, not thought through scenes. Yes. Um, you can have weird layers, uh, you can have a, a, a different looking Batcave, but it's got to have been well thought out. And that I think is the biggest thing, is that there just wasn't any thought put into these exactly. sets apart from let's get it ready for getting made into toys. It's uh, very weird. And so many Lumo weird colour set designs yeah. that happen throughout the film. And very, constant very light strange. displays. Yeah, it was just like a... I don't know, spew of everything <laughs> just put together. No excuse, Joel Schumacher. Yeah. No excuse. Fix number five, non-action. For an action movie, this action was either <laughs> really not there or really, really awful. From sliding down uh, uh, dinosaur backs 
to awful choreography, to not even actually really fighting half the time, even though they were meant to be fighting, uh, the fighting left, or the non-action, left a lot to be desired. The way we'd solve this is, make it better. It was 1998. Don't show us that you're using wires. Gravity is real. That's a real thing, even in the Batman universe, Joel Schumacher. Um, that speaks to the directing as well. So yeah. many close-up shots, we were never given a broad pan-out shot of any fight scene or any, uh, any of the sets because they were so bad. Yeah, just use what you have, use your actors, choreograph it better. Fix number six, Bane, in more ways than one. Bane is a huge uh, part of the DC Universe and the Batman world, and we felt that he was just, you know, totally ignored, made into some uh, juice head on steroids, and so basically he was Poison Ivy's little Blackie. skivvy that was just running around and moving stuff for her. He was the brawn of the film. It was very poorly done. He, the, the way he looked was terrible, and uh, the, even the way they killed him, they literally just took out a, his pipe and deflated yeah. him. And whenever she needed him to work, she just presses <laughs> the button on his chest. It was horrible. Really horrible. How would you fix this, Matt? As you say, Bane's a really serious character. He's more than just Brawn. He's an amazing mastermind. He's the guy that takes down Batman and, and, and breaks the bat. Uh, either do him properly or don't include him at all. And I think in this case, uh, which we're getting to now, too many characters don't include him. He's not needed. He doesn't bring anything that a non that another muscular person couldn't have brought into the role. Uh, if you have to have muscle for Ivy, use it. But Ivy's perfectly capable of using nature to do all the muscle that she needs. There's no reason for him to be included. Leave him out. Fix number seven. Batman and Robin and Batgirl and and and. Far too many villains, all of whom are big names within the DC and Batman universe, all of whom ordinarily have completely different motivations to one another, all of whom act very differently, all of whom interact with Batman very differently, far too much for a Batman movie or for a movie format. Um, yeah. Once again, it seemed rushed from the film. Uh, and yeah, just to, like a, a multi-pronged approach. P fans take these characters very seriously. Take your time. You, the, the way that the characters were portrayed perhaps in the newer Batmans with the Dark Knight series was much better. They focus on Batman, a villain, and maybe a side villain or side he sidekicks that came on in yeah. later films. Choose two, choose three. Don't just dilute all of the characters by throwing them all in one form because you want to make money and uh, giving us a mediocre product. Choose, choose two. Fix number eight, not punny. What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! The script, Matt. The script in this film. <laughs> the amount of freeze, cold, chill puns that we got <laughs> was just terrible. Poison Ivy had a lot Too of them. Too damn high. <laughs> <laughs> Too damn high. It was terrible. I think the bulk of the character's dialogue were, were puns. Yeah. Whether it was about Poison Ivy being with Mother Nature, and her leaves and all of this stuff. Or Mr. Freeze, he had his own. Stay cool. This is a chilled party. It was terrible, really, really terrible. I mean, like we keep saying, Batman is a very serious film. It's fine if you do it once or twice, but don't make it the bulk of the dialogue to get quick laughs or no laughs. They weren't worth any laughs. Anyway, Matt, how would you fix it? So, as I said, either just make it for one person, give it, make that their particular trope, add it in once or twice every now and again, but as much as Batman series, these are, you are dealing with the serious villains in the DC universe, you're not dealing with the calendar man, uh, you are dealing with, like, the big names within the universe, these are serious people, you're not dealing with a Harley Quinn who can get away with it, mm. or a Joker who can or, get away with or it, or Riddler even, or Riddler, you're dealing with the more serious people, Dr. Freeze has gone through a lot, mm. uh, don't, don't undermine these characters, or if you do, don't make it everybody, because then it, it's just poor, lazy script writing. It's not Power Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> Fix number nine, the Zippo effect. Batman never seems prepared for, Doctor, or for Mr. Freeze, which is weird, considering that like, fire, right? And heat yeah. is all you need. Don't match. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's incredibly annoying that for a character who's superpower, if you will, is his intelligence and is the fact that he's prepared and well-resourced and always ready for what he's going to encounter, 
doesn't ever utilize it or doesn't ever seem prepared to deal with someone whose weakness is very clear, obvious, and easy to figure out. Uh, that, uh, so, in addition to his unpreparedness, the fact that when we do then see the scenes when anything gets dealt with or when there's fights, it's just awful to watch. When Batman is prepared, uh, the CGI is just absolutely awful to watch and endure. They use lighters, like lighter-sized lasers to thaw out mirrors yeah. that they need to use to save the world, or at least save Gotham. It was terrible. How we'd fix this is, Prepare Batman, stick to his character, he's intelligent, he's always over-prepared. Whether you watch him in the Justice League or in his own films or his, read his own comics, he is always prepared, he's always thinking ahead, he's one step ahead of his villain. This was terrible, I mean, it's fire, I mean, it's ice, use fire to kill him. A lot of it. <laughs> A lot of it, yeah. <laughs> Not one zipper. It's even bring on Superman and use his laser eyes or something like that, just, just be prepared, Batman. Go away, Supergirl, we don't need you. <laughs> This movie really just ignored Batman's strengths and just led up to something that we didn't understand and it was an easy plot device that they could have used. Use fire. Fix number 10. Alternate ending. At the end of the film, we get a weak ending. Mr. Freeze is suddenly a pinnacle of morality for Batman. He gives Batman the cure to Alfred's disease and everyone just goes off and carries on living a happy life. Mr. Freeze gets his revenge by maybe killing Poison Ivy, we're not sure how that ends. And uh, Alfred is cured and everything's great. I mean, this is a serious film. We're used to seeing really hardcore stuff in Batman films. Matt, how would you solve this? As Tal said, much ado about nothing. Uh, after two hours of trying to find something that it was actually about, uh, treat these characters seriously, give them the endings that they deserve. This is a fight that we've been waiting for a long time on. We don't get our payoff at the end. Mm -mm. We get characters that act contrary to everything they've been doing up until that point. No lead up for that. Uh, it's a movie that doesn't take itself seriously the whole way through and annoyingly doesn't take itself seriously at the end. Treat it seriously, give us the ending that we need. Uh, if, even, if that mean, even if that means the demise of Mr. Freeze, mm. but I wouldn't. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed our video, click like or subscribe to see more of our channels. Otherwise, all of our links to our Facebook, YouTube, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram are in the description below. Um, I'm Talia. I'm Matthew. And this has been how the critics would fix Batman and Robin in ten easy fixes.